Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective Finding Our Hearts workshop series. My name is Abigail Twyman, and I will be your host today. At our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, we are on a mission to build a collective of global literacy coaches who are empowered with tools of direct instruction, precision teaching, PACs, and self-directed education. Thank you for coming and welcome. Today is Friday, October 29th, 2021. This is the fourth week of our workshop series. And during week four, we are reflecting and preparing. Today, we are celebrating National Hermit Day, World Psoriasis Day, and World Stroke Day. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a little bit. As I said, my name is Abigail Twyman. I am coming to you today from Tlingit Ani, the traditional homelands of the Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian people. And the work that we do is in the service of the betterment of our world for the future ancestors of this world. Um, all the work that we do, we synchronize to the moon cycle, and this is a way for us to generate and maintain momentum in our actions. At the beginning of the month, in alignment with the new moon, we will set our intentions. At the, in the first quarter of the moon, part of the month, we are exploring possibilities. In the, at the full moon time, we are making decisions. And in the third quarter moon, um, part of the cycle, which we're in right now, is when we are resting, reflecting, and preparing for the next month to come. We approach life and we teach others to approach life from a humanistic, um, be, uh, a humanistic stance. Um, I am a behavioral scientist, a creative writer, and a data-driven optimist. One of the tools as a humanistic behavioral scientist that I have come to um, learn and love and want to share with others in this world to increase and improve nurturing environments and help others build cooperative behavior with themselves, their families, and their communities is ACT or acceptance and commitment training. One of the tools that we'll talk about that we're talking about this term is called the ACT matrix. And that is a tool that is used for shared decision making using strategies and, um, and perspectives from acceptance and commitment training or ACT for short. And within ACT, there are six elements of psychological flexibility that we look at and we work to identify where our challenges are as individuals. And then we, there are things that we can do. There are skills that we can learn, that there are tools that we can use, there are exercises that we can practice to increase our psychological flexibility. And by increasing psychological flexibility, we are more ready and more able to handle life's challenges as they come to us, let those challenges pass on by us and keep on moving forward in the service of our values. For the next four weeks, we have four more sessions left in our workshop series. And so each day for the next four weeks, I'm going to be introducing a one of the psychological flexibility components. There are six of them. So I'm going to introduce to you the first four um, and then um, actually have us practice together one of the recommended exercises to develop that aspect of psychological flexibility. The book that I'm going to be referencing that I highly recommend if you don't have it already is called A Liberated Mind, um, How to Pivot Towards What Matters. And this book is by the one and only Stephen Hayes. Um, and in this book, the first pivot that they talk about, this is a psychological flexibility pivot, is, really, is called diffusion. And so the, 
what we are going to talk about today is diffusion. Um, the, the kind of the caption or the key phrase for this, the subtitle is putting the mind on a leash. And so you can kind of visualize that as, you know, we want to go from having a you know, a wild dog that's running off and, you know, running down the street, not listening to commands and getting our mind on a leash so we can kind of, we can control what's happening better in our lives and our brains and our bodies um, and become more, more flexible in how we um, arrive at our day-to-day experiences um, so we can move forward effectively. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to read a section of this, um, the section of the book to you, and then we're going to do the first exercise um, that is to practice diffusion skills. And the first one, first exercise that we're going to introduce to you is called disobey on purpose. Okay, so I'm going to encourage you to. Um, close your eyes or get out a notebook or just be able to be in a space where you can listen deeply and um, just let the, let these words wash over you. It is okay if you've never heard of these things before, if you've never experienced this before, we are all learning and growing together. So this is a section from the book, A Liberated Mind by Stephen Hayes. It's important to work some diffusion practices into your life in that ongoing way, using them to help you progressively think more flexibly. The goal is not just to make the specific pivot, it's to learn the dance. You will need to continue developing the skill of diffusion for the rest of your life. Just as meditators must keep working on their meditation skills, Lifetime practice of the of diffusion is needed to keep the pull of the yearning for coherence from tempting us into making, into trying to make all of our thoughts consistent or else. That kind of coherence, let's call it literal coherence, is ultimately impossible. But learning to take what is useful and leaving the rest what we'll call functional coherence, is both helpful and possible. While it's common and even helpful to feel a sense of freedom and distance in a, in a matter of minutes, be careful. Your mind may try to convince you that you have solved the fusion problem and are done with it. Don't you believe it? Fusion is not behind you. The dictator within is just giving you a dangerous new thought to diffuse from. No matter how good you are at diffusion, your mind will keep forming thoughts, forming new thoughts that you will naturally fuse with, such as I'm the world's expert in diffusion. It's vital to stay aware of this tendency. I've been practicing diffusion for more than 30 years now, and I still have to catch myself as I'm getting entangled in my thoughts. Every day, it happens. By now, sometimes just catching it is enough. But if not, I immediately engage in one of the diffusion practices. And sometimes fusion still slips by me for a period of time. That is inevitable. The goal is progress, not perfection. Fair warning, some of these exercises may feel odd and even a little silly. No worry, humor is in fact called for here. We are funny creatures. Just work through them with a sense of self-compassion. So this first exercise is called Disobey on Purpose. And there are many exercises that are um, explored in this book and introduced that are wonderful. And I really, like I said, I really encourage you to get this book if you have not already. It's been relatively life-changing for me and for many people in this world. I'd like to introduce to you the first exercise called Disobey on Purpose. Okay, so let's start with one that you are sure will be perplexing. 
but let's just trust. We are going to stand up together and we are going to carry whatever is in your hand. And while we are, um, um, we're going to slowly walk around the room while reading the thought or saying the following sentence. I cannot walk around this room. I cannot walk around this room. I cannot work around this room. I cannot walk around this room. I cannot walk around this room. So now let's sit down. It is such a tiny thing, isn't it? A tiny poke in the eye of that director within, a little tug on that Superman cape. This exercise was one of the earliest diffusion discoveries used in the act studies during, uh, done during the 1980s. Even though it's a little bit of a silly exercise, a team in Ireland showed recently in a laboratory experiment that it immediately increased tolerance to experimentally induced pain by nearly 40%. I'm not talking about people saying they can tolerate pain. People, people were willing to keep their hand on a very, very hot plate. Not hot to the point of injury, mind you, just hot enough to cause real pain. 40% longer, they were able to hold their hand there. After just a few moments of saying one thing while doing the opposite. Think about that. Even the tiniest little demonstration that the mind's power over you is an illusion can very quickly give you significantly more freedom to do hard things. You can easily build this into your life as a regular practice. Right now I'm thinking, I cannot type this, this, this sentence. I can't. And we have only just gotten started. So again, this was from the book, A Liberated Mind by Stephen Hayes. The first pivot, the first um, aspect of psychological flexibility is called diffusion. This, um, there are many um, aspects of diffusion or many exercises that help us diffuse. Fusion is this idea that our thoughts are tightly linked and, and, we've, and we can get kind of stuck in these negative thought patterns and believe that these thoughts have control over our lives. But the reality is, is that that is just an illusion. Thoughts are just thoughts. They do not control what we do. And by doing this little exercise of doing something, well, saying the opposite can actually um, create this uh, a functional coherence. Um, that we are talking about. So I hope you enjoyed that exercise. I hope you find it helpful. And I look forward to hearing um, your feedback on this. So every day of the week at our home, our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, we have daily challenges. And on Friday is Full Bore Friday. And that is when we share a moment in history, a historical fact um, from this day in history. And the one for today is that this is the day, October 29th in 1969, that the Supreme Court ruled that schools must desegregate. If you are interested in learning more about this moment in history, I encourage you to go to the Zen Project um, and look at this day in history. We also always identify three um, remembrances or observances on every day and um, provide some activities or um, extra reading material that you can do with your family as part of your homeschool program just to change things up and learn something new. We can all kind of get stuck in our in our patterns and our habits. And so this is just a, a fun way to um, connect with other uh, connect with other things going on in the world that you might, you and your family might be interested in knowing about. So today is National Hermit Day. 
some of us are feeling quite hermity these days. Um, it's also World Psoriasis Day, which is, an, which is a skin condition that um, negatively impacts many people. Um, and it's also World Stroke Day, um, which um, we always are um, you know, concerned about long-term outcomes for people and families. And strokes are one of those things that can have long lasting implications for individuals and families. And so we look forward to hearing from you, um, your connections to these remembrances, your reflections on um, the historical moment that we're reflecting on today. Um, and I hope you enjoy the activities and the graphics that we are providing on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. We always, um, it's always important to us to review our agreements at the beginning of every workshop. The agreements that we have within this, well, within our group, within the work that we do is to protect, uplift, inspire, and empower others. We listen for understanding and take responsibility for our actions. We are committed to being more impactful. At times we might pause to regather our thoughts or focus rather than um, carrying on mindlessly. If you hear something that, that is said during one of our workshops and you want to kind of capture that nugget of wisdom, that gem, um, please uh, write that down, share it, um, and you know, share the work that we're doing here with others. Um, if you're here participating in the workshop live and in person, you're always welcome to pass. Um, we do record our workshops, but we edit out all, um, all voices that aren't the presenters to protect everybody's privacy. Um, and we also um, always use sound verbal behavior um, when we are speaking, and this is measured and deliberate speech, and it's the opposite of noxious verbal behavior. Sound verbal behavior keeps us calm and resonating and connecting with others. Noxious verbal behavior um, blocks us from making those connections. So my friends, are you ready to FBT? If you say yes, that means that you are agreeing to always for really listen, be radical and take action in your lives. Let's get started. Our values at our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective are to act with pride. Act with pride stands for acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm. Our mode of entre has a little song to go with it. So if you know it, sing it along with me. If you don't, if you don't know it yet, just listen in. Ready? We live. Resource land sustainably. We embody peace, love, and joy. We effectively advocate for change. We fuel genuine heart connections. We know who we are as a family. We are strong and self assured. We are confident and motivated. We are happy, vibrant, and full of life. We totally love and accept ourselves. We are enough and all we can be. We are committed to taking action. We act with pride every day. All right, friends. Every day, every workshop, we have three guiding questions. The first two guiding questions are changing every week, and the third guiding question is staying the same as we're kind of working through this uh, writing prompt. Our first guiding question for today is, what is the ideal health maintenance routine? And we're going to use the ACT matrix to explore possibilities. The second question is, what could we do to make health maintenance more manageable? And we're going to use the PAX tool shared vision to explore possibilities. And then finally, our third guiding question is, 
where do we want to be in 10 years? And we are going to continue working on um, the writing prompts for this and encourage and encourage everyone to commit to writing the stories of our future selves, which also happens to be another tactic, another strategy, another tool, another exercise within the Liberated Mind book to increase psychological flexibility. All right, friends, it is time for our first guiding question. What is the ideal health maintenance routine? And as a reminder, refresher, or um, a review for those of you who have not joined us in the past, um, the ACT matrix, ACT stands for Acceptance and Commitment Training, ACT, ACT. Um, the ACT matrix is used to explore possibilities and most importantly, make decisions as a collective. So this is a tool that you can use to make decisions with your family and make sure that everybody has their voice heard when we are making decisions as a group. We always start in the lower right-hand corner um, or quadrant here. Number one is the area where we, we all contribute to this, um, to this brainstorming area around our priorities values and goals. Like what are the things that matter to us in relation to that guiding question? Once we've kind of exhausted our ideas about the priorities, values, and goals that we have individually and together, then we move to box two, the top right quadrant. And in this box, we brainstorm and contribute our ideas about things that we could do, actions that we can take that would move us closer towards our priorities, values, and goals. What are those things that we can do to get us one step closer to our final and our um, ideal outcomes? We then move on to box three. This is in the top left-hand quadrant. And this is where we are brainstorming and contributing our ideas in relation to things that we do or we might do that would move us away from our priorities, values, and goals. And then finally, we move on to box four in the lower left-hand quadrant. And this is where we brainstorm and contribute ideas about thoughts, feelings, and barriers that we anticipate may come up that will be indicators that we're moving away from our priorities, values, and goals. So these might be things that we're thinking or feeling or saying or experiencing that are keeping us from realizing our fullest potential. And these are important to talk about and get out on the table because these are the things that act for us as um, warning signs, as warning signals when we are able to notice those thoughts and feelings and those barriers that are coming up. We can notice it when we can notice those things more readily. We can identify very, you know, very quickly that we're moving away from our values and goals. That gives us the opportunity to recalibrate and kind of recenter ourselves, move back into box number two, focus on those things that we can do to move closer towards our goals. And that will help keep us in alignment, keep us on course, keep us on track to getting where we want to go. Um, in the time frame we want to get there. So let's go ahead and get started. So our question today is, what is the ideal health maintenance routine? So when we are engaging in conversations with families or community groups or our um, you know, business associates and going through this process using the ACT matrix to make decisions, we will often pose the question, 
provide the prompt, what, you know, what we're, what we're asking, what we're looking for, what we, what we need to be thinking about. And then we will give ourselves a, a minute or two or, you know, to silently reflect on the question ourselves to come up with the, with the, those ideas and our contributions. And then we'll give each person an opportunity to contribute their piece. And so um, as a PAX Tools community trainer, there are a few extra to, a few tools that um, it's important for me to model, to demonstrate for you. So you can see how these might be used um, just in context. So the first tool that I use um, is the harmonica, which is our PAX focus. This is a kind of a, a calming type of sound that draws people's attention, but not in a way that will um, activate their, um, their uh, fight, flight, or freeze system. So sometimes the, the sounds that we use the, the, to get people's attention are actually counterproductive to our end goal. So if we're um, shouting to get people's attention, we're knocking, we're clapping, we're blowing whistles, those things are actually, those are not um, trauma-informed approaches to getting people's attention. So I would encourage you all to, um, you know, there's chimes, bells, something soothing sound, a harmonica, that, that cuts through cuts through the noise, gains people's attention in a way that um, gains their focus um, without activating their stress response system. The second tool that is important to know about and to um, become familiar with using on a regular basis is called Beat the Timer. And so if you have not already downloaded the PAX Tools app, there is a, um, there's an app that you can download. It's free. Um, that's where you can learn all about the different PAX tools, the nine PAX tools that are available. Um, and one of the PAX tools is Beat the Timer. And it's really just, it's a simple timer. You can either use a stop, use the stopwatch version or the timer version to set a specific time. And this is where you would, while we are um, having this discussion and using the act matrix to make decisions, we can use the timer to, you know, uh, to give ourselves a clear beginning and end. So, okay, this is our question. We're going to be thinking about um, our, and contributing to the first box. Let's give ourselves one minute or two minutes to think about this and brainstorm on our own, and then we'll contribute. And then you would simply say, okay, is everybody ready? Thank you. Okay, let's please begin. You would have give them, give people time to uh, uh, brainstorm their contributions. And then when the time is over, you can say, okay, thank you. Now we're ready to move on to um, filling out this chart. So when the timer is over, you've, you've given yourselves a couple minutes to think about how you will, would respond, what you want to put in this box, then we will start um, gathering contributions. Okay, so now let's begin um, inputting our contributions into the priorities, values, and goals. Depending on the size of your group and the complexity of the question, you might have a lot of information that goes on, goes on in here. Today, we're going to um, limit ourselves to three priorities, values, and goals around this question. What is our ideal health maintenance routine? Okay. And so let's um, get started with this. So one major value or priority related to health maintenance routine. A common one is um, strength and flexibility. We'll put in here building and maintaining. Okay, so it's important to 
build and maintain strength and flexibility um, from early ages to ensure that our bodies and our are prepared for life as we age. Um, the other important thing in regard to our ideal health maintenance routine um, might be around nutrition. So um, nutritious food, healthful and nutritious. And we might say not just um, food, but this could be food and relationships. And finally, priorities, values, and goals related to a health maintenance routine um, is, I would say, simple and sustainable. So we want to, so it's, so let's say it's important to us to build routines and um, traditions okay. or kind of norms. Let's say, let's say all the common traditions. Okay. So we have, uh, we've come together as a family around this question, what's our ideal health maintenance routine? We've noticed that we have some challenges, we have some struggles, we wanna talk about it, we wanna to come together to make some decisions to make a more um, effective plan for ourselves. And we've talked about this, we brainstormed by ourselves and then we came together with our contributions and it came out that we all val we value strength and flex building and maintaining strength and flexibility. We value um, healthful and nutritious food and relationships. And we want to keep things simple and sustainable. Um, we want to keep our routines and our traditions simple and sustainable. Um, so they, um, so they nurture us, but they're also, um, they're not um, taking away from um, our end goals. Okay. So now that we have our priorities, values, and goals, we move on to um, box number two. And this is where we identify actions, things that we can do to move towards our priorities, values, and goals. <clears throat> okay. So for this one, for demonstration purposes, um, again, we would give people an opportunity to brainstorm on their own silent reflection, and then everybody would have the opportunity to share. Um, I forgot to mention that one of the other PAX tools that is very helpful with um, when you were having conversations like this to ensure that everybody has an equal opportunity to respond is by using PAX sticks. And PAX sticks, there's in the app, there's a way that you can, um, you know, input everybody's name from your family. And then PAX sticks is a way to randomly select the person who is contributing next. Um, and it's also can be helpful to use beat the timer. If you have it, if one or more of your family members has a, has a tendency to um, contribute a lot or talk a lot, sometimes it's helpful to set a time limit. Okay, everybody has 30 seconds to say, you know, to provide their input, and then we're going to put a pause on that person and go to the next person. And then make, if you make a couple rounds like that, where it's kind of you know, popcorn style, rapid responding, everybody has an opportunity to respond. Everybody has an opportunity to be heard. Um, but we're also um, working on our fluency of getting our ideas out in a clear and concise manner, communicating more effectively and more efficiently. Okay, so now let's um, let's do it. Let's take a moment to pause and silently reflect. What are things that we could do that would move us towards our priorities and values related to strength and flexibility, 
healthful and nutritious, healthy, health, healthful and nutritious food relationships, and simple and sustainable routines and traditions. All right. So now let's get some contributions in here. So for illustration purposes, we're going to we're going to pull in two of our um, we have two actions per uh, per priority for demonstration purposes. So let's focus on strength and uh, building and maintaining strength and flexibility. What are two things that we could do that would move us closer towards the that priority value and goal? Um, and so let's put in here some stuff, from, some items from our brainstorming. We could um, have a, we could do a morning uh, stretching and breathing routine. And in the afternoon, um, we have a cardio and workout routine. So things that we could do to focus, to improve strength and flexibility, to build and maintain, is to is to establish a morning stretching and breathing routine, and an afternoon cardio and workout routine. Let's move on to priority number two, which is healthful and nutritious food and relationships. So what are two things that we could do, two actions we could take to move us closer towards that priority value and goal? Let's see, we could, let me summarize this, um, for more healthful and nutritious food, um, maybe we decide that we need to um, plan and prepare meals ahead of time. And for, let's we can focus on the, the relationship aspects of it, is to ensure um, quality time. with family members. And it's rather than ensure, we're going to say plan. We're going to plan quality time with family members to build and maintain those relationships. And then finally, in relation to simple and sustainable routines and traditions, we are going to um, make a daily, weekly, and monthly schedule. That's something that's important. And then when it comes to, to, to traditions, um, this is where we might want to we, we might want to focus on making a seasonal yearly or holiday plan. And this might be something where you're, you're really um, focusing on the ebbs and flows of the day-to-day -day life um, to ensure that you're kind of thinking ahead of what's to come and planning for those seasons. Okay, awesome. So we've got our priorities, values, and goals. We've got things that we could do to move towards those priorities, values, and goals. And now we move on to box three, which is to talk about um, things that we might do that move us away from our priorities, values, and goals. So again, let's take a minute to silently reflect on this. And then we will contribute our ideas to the matrix. Okay, so now let's summarize those thoughts into our matrix. So again, we're going to kind of identify two things that we 
that we might do that would move us away per priority value and goal. So we'll look at the first one, strength and flexibility, building and maintaining strength and flexibility. What are some things that we might do that would move us away from that? Uh, we might uh, sleep in late and skip the morning routine. We might uh, prioritize um, leisure activities over workout. Those are two things that we might do that would move us away from our uh, goals. So then helpful and nutritious food and relationships. What are a couple of things that we might do that would move us away from those goals? Um, we might uh, but we might rather than planning and preparing meals ahead of time, fast, easy pick up meals uh, like take out okay. take out or order in and um, something that we might do that would get in the way of um, helpful and nutritious relationships might be over scheduling and deprioritizing uh, family time. Let's see, deprioritizing QT, quality time. That's easy to do. Um, okay, and then finally, let's look at the third priority value and goal, which is simple and sustainable routines and traditions. Things that we might do that would pull us away from that would be to um, not plan ahead. Um, no regular schedule. Okay. And um, this another one might be just over scheduling and deprioritizing. Okay, deprioritizing celebrations. Let's use a different word here. So, uh, we'll say mindless. Uh, action and, and undervaluing celebrations. We're just kind of going through the motions, going through life, not stopping to pause and reflect and celebrate um, and keep those traditions, um, keep those traditions going. Okay. So now finally for this act matrix, the final thoughts, feel, thought, the final box is to identify thoughts, feelings, and barriers that might come up um, that would be indicators that we're moving away from our priorities, values, and goals. So um, what are some thoughts that would come up if you were sleeping in late and skipping your morning routine, prioritizing leisure over workouts, going for fast, easy pickup meals, over scheduling and deprioritizing quality time with your family and friends, not planning ahead, not making schedule or engaging in some mindless action or kind of undervaluing traditions and celebrations. Some thoughts I might be. So let's take a moment um, to silently reflect on these things for ourselves, and then we'll come back together and summarize our contributions. Okay, 
So now let's summarize those contributions. Some thoughts and feelings we might have if we were engaging in these box number three actions or inactions might be, I'm so lazy and fat and gross and I'll never get better. Whoa, that's, that's a big bad one. And what are some other thoughts, feelings, and barriers that might come up? I don't have time for working out. Maybe tomorrow. What else might come up? Let's see. Ugh, it's too hard. Go plan ahead and prepare meals. What else might you be thinking? Ain't nobody got time for family. Time for that. I'm too busy. What other things might come up? Uh, I'm not a scheduled person. I just go with the flow. And finally, what might come up is um, uh, uh, who wants to waste time? Uh, who wants to waste time with celebrations? Or we'll say with the holidays. Okay. So again, these are so these are some thoughts that might come up that when you notice those thoughts would be an opportunity for you to kind of use that as a cue or a clue that something's not going right. Maybe I'm not living in accordance with my priorities, values, and goals, and we need to reconsider and, kind of, and, and get back on track. Um, one, of the, one of the other really fun diffusion strategies that we didn't talk about today, um, but one of them that I love the most is uh, making a silly song out of those um, negative thoughts that come up, those negative and self-defeating thoughts. So what that would look like is let's take a look at this first thought. I'm so lazy and fat and gross that I will never get better. I know that I, I have thought those thoughts before, and I know that many of you out there have likely thought those thoughts as well. Those are, that is the dictator within telling us lies to control us, but we know that thoughts are just illusions. They do not control our behavior. Just because we think something does not make it true. And we have to uh, develop a different relationship with those thoughts. So one thing that you can do if thoughts like this come up is make a silly song out of it. So if you had the thought, I'm so fit, lazy and fat and gross and I'll never get better, you might want to make a song out of it. And let's make a song to twinkle, twinkle, little star. So, I'm so lazy and fat and gross and I'll never get better. I'm so lazy and so fat and gross and I'll never get better. I'm so lazy and fat and gross and I'll never get better. So that made me laugh. I hope that made you laugh too. This is singing your, singing your thoughts like that can be a really quick and easy fun way to break that, break that negative thought cycle and get you back on track to living your best life and meet and moving ever closer to your goals.
All right, it's time for guiding question number two, which is what could we do to make health maintenance more manageable? And for this question, we are going to use the PAX tool, Shared Vision, to explore possibilities and establish expectations of ourselves and our family. So as a reminder, review for those of you who might not have been here before or could use a review, PAX tool Shared Vision is a way for us to come together around a question, around a concern, something that is um, you know, not really working for us or our families or our community and having a constructive conversation about what we want to see, hear, feel, and do more of, and what we want to see, hear, feel, and do less of. So these are the things that we expect of ourselves and each other, and it can be super duper helpful to come together and have this conversation, get people's input to ensure that we're all on the same page and we're able to talk through some of these things. So. Similarly to the ACT matrix, we are going to give ourselves and our, our group members some time to brainstorm, think about what their contributions might be, <clears throat> how they really feel about these things. And you can go one box at a time, or you can go one row at a time. So if I was going one, if we were going one box at a time, we might just simply ask the question, what would you like to see more of, or what would you see more of if we had a manageable health maintenance routine? And then you would go box by box, give time to think, take contribution, give time to think, take contributions. And so you would do that eight times. Another way to do this, especially once people get experience with this and are comfortable with having these conversations or have you know, are, uh, are fluent at having these conversations, um, we can just ask the blanket question, focus on the top row, what we want to see here, feel and do left more of, and then we would do a second round, which is what we want to see here, feel and do less of. So today that's what we're going to model. We're going to get experience with. So um, what could we do to make health maintenance more manageable? So we're, we're going to kind of reframe that question and say, if our health maintenance routine was, mo was manageable, what would we see, feel, hear, and do more of? So we're going to give ourselves a few minutes to think, silent counsel, and then come together to contribute to the chart. Okay, great. So now let's summarize what we came up with um, on our own into the chart. As a reminder, when we're doing this, we really want to, our end goal is to have many more um, things in the top row than we have in the less row. In the, in the bottom row, in the less. So we really want to be emphasizing and focusing on the positives. What can we do, see here? What, will, what do we want to see here, feel, and do more of? And acknowledging the negative, acknowledging the less, but what you'll start to see is sometimes the things we want less of can actually be flipped into what we want more of. So we can focus on the positive things that we want to do more of that we can actually reinforce. Okay. So let's get started. So what are some what are the some of the things that we came up with that we want to see that we would see more of if we had a more manageable health routine? Right? We might see more fit and healthy bodies. Okay. We might see more healthy foods. We might see more <clears throat> working out. We might see more calm interactions. We might see more shared laughter. 
easy to laugh when we're working out together. Um, let's see, we might see more. Um, out equipment. Let's see. If we had a more manageable health maintenance routine, we might see more. Um, celebrating accomplishments. Say so celebrating wins. Okay, so we'll keep it at seven. Okay, so if our health maintenance routine was more manageable and more effective, what would we feel more of? We might feel more, we might feel stronger. We might feel more flexible. We might feel more uh, lung capacity if we're working on breathing exercises. We might feel more balanced. We might feel more um, uh, accepting, accepting of ourselves and others. We might feel more um, happy and we might feel more connected. Okay, now let's summarize our contributions. What would we hear more of? We might hear more body positivity. We might hear more um, calm voices. We might hear people um, collaborating. Um, collaborative cooking. <laughs> um, we might hear people um, cheering each other on. Celebrating our wins and our successes. We might hear more laughter. We might hear more steady breathing. And we might hear more um, See, what, we, what would we be hearing? Um, all here on. Uh, I was saying silly one. Okay. We might hear more blenders making smoothies. <laughs> A healthy snack. Okay. All right. And then last but not least in the more row, um, what might we be doing more of if we had a more uh, manageable health routine? We might be doing more sticking to our routine. We might be doing more eating um, at home. We might be doing more regular workouts. We might be doing more drinking water. We might be doing more um, accountability checks. We might be doing more um, uh, celebrating. And we might be doing more um, shared meals. Awesome. Okay. So now that we're done with that, we're done focusing on the positives. Okay. We do that. And we'll pretend that stayed green. <laughs> now let's move on to the bottom. Okay. So now again, we can do this one at a time or um, so each box at one at a time, or we could do a whole row at a time. Today, we're going to do the whole row. We're going to pose the question, if we 
um, if our health maintenance routine was not manageable, what would be we, what would we be seeing? Or conversely, what do we want if if we want to have, or if our health maintenance routine is going to be manageable, what will we be seeing, feeling, hearing, and doing less of? So let's get started. Let's take a moment, a few minutes to silently reflect, and then we'll share our contribution. Wonderful. So now let's add in our ideas about this. And we had seven on the top. We're going to stick to three or four on the bottom. So to keep it, to make sure that we're it's always going to be less on the, we're going to have less lesses. <laughs> so what would we be seeing less of if we, if, or what do we want to be seeing less of? We want to be seeing less, um, say poor, poor posture. Because when we start to work out and we get flexible, like we're standing stronger. So let's say we'd be seeing less poor posture. We would be seeing less sitting around. We would see less, um, Unhealthy snacks. Unhealthy snacks. Okay. What would we, we be feeling less of? Okay. If we had a, if we had a um, manageable health maintenance routine, we would be seeing less. Uh, or we would be sorry, we'd be feeling less. Um, uh, it. Uh, icky. And we would be feeling less disconnected. As you can see, again, that's kind of, I mentioned that sometimes our lesses are the opposite of our mores. And so now let's move on to here. What would we hear less of if our health maintenance routine was manageable? Um, we would hear less negative self-talk. We would hear less groaning and moaning. And we would hear less um, I don't know, let's say we'll hear less arguing. And finally, what would we be doing less of if our health maintenance routine was more manageable? We would be making, um, we would be doing, we would be doing less of making excuses. We would be doing less, um, Uh, quick and easy, quick and easy solutions. And we would be doing less um, of drinking, we'll call them drinking junk. <laughs> Things that aren't, aren't of value to our brains and our bodies. All right. Awesome. Okay, so I hope you all can start to see how um, how wonderful this tool can be for there we go. All right. So so I'm hoping that you can see how wonderful that this tool can be for getting things out on the table and really having a thoughtful and meaningful discussion around what are the things that we want to see here, feel and do more of? What are the things we want to see here, feel and do less of? Because this is a, you know, this is that first step to being able to set shared expectations of each other so we can move forward together. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, friends, it's time for our final guiding question for today, which is where do we want to be in 10 years? So going through the exercise of writing the story of your future self can be super duper powerful in helping us really identify what our values actually are and where we want to be and where we want to go. And by doing this, it can help us um, clarify for ourselves and others what our goal values, priorities, and goals are, and it can help us reflect and stay on track um, with, um, with where we want to go to make sure that we're always acting in the service of our values. So we start it, we always start with um, the kind of the long-term kind of thinking way out in 10 years, where do we want to be? And then come a little bit closer to the now. In five years, where do we want to be? In three years, in one year, in the next three months, in the next month, in the next week. Um, and that's how we can kind of uh, create a story kind of going out from the beginning and moving closer into the present moment to um, kind of basically kind of create our path um, in by starting with the end in mind. So for today, so we in the past couple of weeks we did a um, you know, where we gave, gave gave ourselves about three minutes to uh, brainstorm, write, reflect in response to one of the um, STEM sentences here. And so I would encourage you all to um, take a moment take a few minutes to pick one of these questions and let's just do a free write. And then if you feel comfortable, you can share. Go ahead and I'll set the timer and please begin. Okay, wonderful. I'm so glad, I'm so thankful to all of you for taking the opportunity, making a commitment to writing your story of your future self, your fa future family, um, and um, going through this process. Because as I said, it can be one of the most powerful tools for getting ourselves in, in alignment with what is most important to us. Thank you all for joining me today. It has been such a pleasure to be your guide and help you as homeschool families learn and get experience with tools that we know will be super helpful to you and your family and your community um, to make shared decisions and set shared expectations of ourselves, our families, and each other. Our invitations to you, we, we welcome you all into our homeschool collective um, for our weekly workshops. We have family coaching available. We have direct instruction available for your children, particularly focused on reading um, and improving literacy skills. If you have the means and the resources to contribute to our GoFundMe, we are working hard to raise capital to purchase direct instruction curriculum and testing kits so we can um, continue to train and coach families um, to become the global literacy coaches that we plan to um, develop a network of over the next 10 years. Um, and Find us on socials on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.